Hi, I'm Bill McLaughlin, Editor-in-Chief of Furniture Today. Welcome to this week's edition of Frontline Friday. We're all back from Las Vegas market and uh, already turning our attention to High Point. You'll hear more about that. Um, while you're watching this, I am at Ashley for the Arts in Arcadia, Wisconsin, uh, which has become one of uh, the country's largest art and music festivals. So uh, expect some coverage of that in upcoming issues, and uh, you can follow me on Facebook Live. Now we're going to go around the table and, and hear what's been going on in uh, the furniture industry this week. Powell, why don't we start with you? The state of Maine just passed the most comprehensive fire retardant um, legislation that we've seen from a state so far. So we got a couple of dozen states that had their own legislation. Um, it kind of complicates the effort toward a national standard, but that effort will keep going. Also, um, I know we just got back from Las Vegas, but guess what? It's time for High Point again. <laughs> um, we've got the list of pre-market exhibitors um, for the September 11th through 12th um, pre-market event. There are 24 on board who are sponsors. We've also already got six um, non-sponsoring companies. Speaking of September, Tom, you're going to Washington, D.C. in September yes. uh, for our next conference. Can yes. you give us a little bit of an update or a preview of what people can expect? Well, one of the things that we've lined up just recently, Bill, is a panel of some of the most dynamic young leaders in the industry. Each of these folks is going to present sort of a, a little bit of a case study leading into the discussion on how they've addressed either challenges or opportunities within their respective organizations. And then we'll follow that with a panel discussion and opportunity for Q&A at the end. I hope people take advantage of that. There's uh, probably a lot to be learned there. I think so. So Clint, you've had a busy week at retail. Uh, I talked to Bob's uh, and today they gave me some uh, details on their first stores that are going to open in uh, Southern California, Los Angeles market. What's interesting is most of the leases are mostly sports chalets, went bankrupt. So they're one of these top 100 retailers expanding and taking advantage of real estate that's coming open as a result of e-commerce and other issues that are facing the broader retail sector. And then separately, uh, I, I talked with Ronnie Ben Simon. He's the he's CEO of uh, Dearden's, which just this past weekend, close their doors after a two-month GOB. One of the reasons they close is because they cater to new Hispanic customers coming into the market. And just the rhetoric coming from this administration has really put a damper on new Hispanic customers coming into the stores. Well, we've heard that from some other retailers as well. That seems to be something that's a, And that's I'm looking for industry. more stories. So anybody that um, has a story along those lines or the opposite, I'd love to hear from you. There you have it. Things to be being covered and opportunities to get coverage. Till next week, I'm Bill McLaughlin in Furniture Today, wishing you good business.